Resiliency. Resiliency is one of the most interesting words that you ever come across. What resiliency means is getting back up off the canvas, never giving up. For those who know about me and what I stand for, I follow a very simple mantra, which is work hard, be kind, and never give up. Part of never giving up is getting back off the canvas. It means that when you fall, you get back up. And there's so many lessons that we can learn, and there's so many lessons in this world about uh, getting back up off the canvas. And over the course of the next minutes, I'm gonna give you some examples of people who you would have never imagined actually fell down or were not a success at some point in their time. And they did something about it. And the first person that we'll talk about is Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, of course, is one of the most famous people ever to be on this planet. His great achievements in creating the iPhone and the iPad and now the iWatch have really stood the test of time. He is one of the most communicative persons that we have had on this world with Thomas Edison, Edison and some of the others. But interestingly, Steve Jobs at one time was fired from the company that he helped create, which was Apple Computers. He was fired because they felt that the direction of the company wasn't going in the way that it should. What did he do? Steve Jobs created a, a new computer system for schools called, called Next. He also helped create and promote uh, Pixar, which is a tremendous success. Eventually, he came back to Apple, and that was the start of the iPhone generation. So at one time, he was doing great as the owner and the person who started Apple Computers. A few, few years later, he was actually fired from the company that he started. But again, he got back up off the canvas. And that takes us to what some of the great people have. And the great people have a number of attributes, attributes that are common to us all. And I'm going to talk about some of the attributes of those people who have become great, who at one time fell down, who fell on the campus, but got back up and became great. They had a talent that was uncommon, an idea that was unrivaled. They had a confidence that was unshakable and a determination that is unwavering. And we'll talk about each of these when we talk about individuals who've had challenges in their life barriers along their path, but they got back up. They got back up to make a success of their time. Like Steve Jobs, he had a talent that was uncommon. Part of his talent was the ability to see how a product can relate to a population. He was a marketing genius. He was able to determine what people needed and then help provide what they needed to them. It was a talent, again, that was uncommon. Another person who had an idea that was unrivaled, in addition to a talent that was uncommon, is Walt Disney. Walt Disney is a person of tremendous success. He's known as one of the greatest people of the 20th century. And that was according to Time Magazine. Um, and many other publications have found that his impact over the 20th century is still even being felt today. However, most people don't know that the first company that Walt Disney created, which is a film and movie studio and an animation studio as well, actually filed for bankruptcy. It was out of Kansas City and he lost the company. It didn't succeed. But he had a talent that was uncommon and he had an idea that was unrivaled. The idea though just didn't work at that time. Its time had not come. Shortly after that he moved to Los Angeles and founded Disney Studios and we know how that ended up. But Steve Jobs, like Walt Disney, had talents that were uncommon and ideas that were unrivaled. And there's a couple thoughts that I think are important as we talk about Walt Disney, and that is that this is a person who really believed in his destiny and was willing to forsake just about anything to achieve it. He believed in the imagination, the power of the idea. And no matter what stumbles he encountered along his life, in fact, Snow White, which is one of his first movies, was the one that actually saved the studio. It provided enough money for him to create the studio that we see today. And it was not assured that the studio, his second studio, would continue until the great success of Snow White. But he got back up off the canvas. 
And he remembered a couple of things. He remembered that you can't choose the cards you're dealt, but you can choose how to play them. He couldn't choose that his idea had not come. He couldn't choose that what he thought would be a tremendous success. The customer, the general public, didn't think so. He also knew, though, that the mark of a person isn't what brought them down, but, it, but what has brought them back up. He knew that his success would not be defined by the failure that he had in his first studio. He knew that he had the right idea. Maybe the timing wasn't right, and maybe there were some aspects of the idea that he really didn't determine to the fullest. But he knew that no matter what happened, no matter what challenges or even failures, that he was going to get back up off the canvas. That brings us to Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper is one of the most heralded singers of her generation. Incredibly, she is the only female to win a Tony as the sole contributor to writing the score of a play. The only female. That's a tremendous accomplishment. By the way, she's also won a Grammy and an Emmy. She's won three of the four top prizes that you can as an entertainer, an Emmy, an, uh, an Emmy, uh, Tony, and then, of course, her Grammy that she won in the early 1980s. She had a confidence that was unshakable. Yes, she had the idea, which was so important, and she had the belief in herself, but she also had that unshakable confidence that what she was doing was going to be right. Why was that confidence so important? She actually filed bankruptcy early in her career. Her career did not go as well as she had hoped, and the first band that she joined didn't make enough money, and she had to file bankruptcy. Shortly thereafter, she had an album called She's So Unusual, and the top song was Girls Just Want to Have Fun, and that propelled her to the greatness that she still enjoys today. That's Cindy Lauper one of the greatest of singers of her generation. And most importantly, what she did with that, we'll talk about in just a second. She had that dream of something better and the determination to make it come true. I've always said dreams are important, but so is the determination. There's some people that wish and hope, but they don't actually do. And that's what you have to do. You have to do so that you can become. You have to dream of something better, of course, but you also have to be determined to make it come true. And that's what Walt Disney and Cindy Lauper and certainly Steve Jobs all had in mind. And that brings us to the last two individuals on our list, Ulysses S. Grant and Mark Twain. Some people will say, what did they have in common? And they were both successful, prominent people. I can't imagine they would ever stumble and have to get back up off the canvas. That's exactly what happened. Ulysses S. Grant was actually uh, told to leave the army because of drinking. This was after he went to West Point, which is the premier military institution in the United States. But he had to leave. He had to leave because of his drinking. Then the Civil War started, and he started as a volunteer. Then he became a colonel, and then he commanded all of the armies of the United States. Interestingly, he is seen as the, along with other people, as the individual who won the Civil War. Shortly thereafter, he became President of the United States, and he became a tremendous success, a two-term president. It didn't stop there, though, because shortly thereafter, um, he squandered all of his money, and he was broke. He had to write his memoirs on his deathbed so that he could provide some money for his family. Who was the person that published those memoirs? Of course, Mark Twain. That's the connection between Ulysses S. Grant. Mark Twain as well had tremendous challenges in his life. Most people don't know that after he produced his seminal work, Tom Sawyer, he was actually broke. He lost quite a bit of money in investments and he had to tour Europe giving speeches. And towards the end of his life, he had to suffer the death of his wife and his two daughters. Both men had tremendous successes. Both men had tremendous failures, but both men got back up off the canvas. And that leads us to what we can learn about resi resiliency. And there's four lessons that I hope we learn from this presentation and presentations about getting back up off the canvas. And that is, life's not fair. From Cindy Lauper to Steve Jobs to Walt Disney to Ulysses S. Grant 
to Mark Twain. They all had tremendous successes from Nobel Prizes to Grammys and Tonys and Academy Awards. Most don't know that Walt Disney won the most number of individual Academy Awards of anybody in history. So they had great successes, but they also had spectacular failures. But from those failures actually became the greatest of their successes. So life isn't fair. Secondly, no one gets it all. You have these great, great successes, but no one gets through this life unscathed. And that means that you have to make the most of what you do get. There's a great saying that no one gets 52 cards in life, but you have to play the, del the cards that you're dealt. And I've always believed that as well. If you look at my life or your life, you'll look back at some of the failures that you had. But failures are only stepping stones to success. And along that stepping stone, along that journey, you have to look for the good as you travel the roads of life. And so we hope that after this presentation, you learn from people who've had great failures in, you, in, your, in their life. It's a great saying that says, if you aim high enough, you'll always fail. If you haven't failed, you probably haven't aimed high enough. I've certainly had my failures as well. I've always gotten back up because I want to be someone good and do something great. And that's a journey. It's not something that happens on a day or even a year. It happens because you're along the right path and you do whatever it takes to get back up after a failure because most importantly, the end is worth it. The goal that you have set for yourself is worth it. You must achieve it because so many people will benefit, not just you, so many people will benefit from the ambitions that you have. And that's my hope for all of you is that you can be someone good and do something great. And remember, when you fall on the canvas, get back up.